today I'm going to go through the, some theoretical background on statistics for machine learning. Now we're going to understand what is the standard deviation, the variance, and the bias. Now these three different formulas are quite easy to use, but you can understand why they're, uh, why they're used as they're used for some reason. You cannot just plot the formulas like that and don't understand why are, there, are they there. Now, uh, so basically I'm going to go through the first, uh, the meaning of each one of them, then the formulas, and at the end I'm going to show some examples. So for the meaning, I'm going to go through an example, particular one. Let's say you have a two-dimensional space with h as the x-axis and the weight. I apologize for my handwriting, my touch screen doesn't help. And then you have a set of data points over here. Now these data can be represented into a table. For instance, the H is A, the weight is W, and you have in here the three points. So let's say that this first point is, we can say that H maybe is 10, and the weight is also 10. In the second one, in here you can say that this is, I don't know, four. 40 maybe, and the weight is kind of like a little bit more, I don't know, don't, don't really listen to these numbers, I'm just trying to figure, I mean, I'm just trying to plot the, stample, the samples. Uh, 30, yeah, I mean, I know that is not healthy for a person of 40 years old to have 30 kilograms, and then the other one is like 30, or I would say 25, this one and the weight is something in between, like 20, all right? Now this one I'm gonna use for each one of them, for the three definitions. Now, uh, when calculating the variance, we're basically calcula calculating uh, the dispersion of the, data, of the data points. So in this particular example, if you take as the world as something that is much, much larger, you can see that all these three points are like in the same, in the same section. Now you can, argue that the expression is low. But if we add in the data points another point like this, then the variance would increase because as you can see, there is, some, there is more difference in the dispersion of the data points. Now, how is this reflected into, into the formula of the variance? Well, if you go through the formula, it's variance equal to uh, sigma to the power of two, which is equal to the sum of each data point minus the mean to the power of two, divided by n. Now, what does it mean? Basically, uh, we are trying to get the distance between each data point and the mean value. Now, you think about the mean value, if you have a point here and you have a point here, then the mean is over here, right? You get x1 minus, sorry, max, plus x2, being this 2 in this 1, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now, this can be generalized, and this is pretty basic math, but I'm, anyways, I'm going to show it. I divided by n, right? So we are summing up all the values and then we're dividing by n. What, that's the definition of the mean. Now, once we have understood this, which is pretty basic, and then if you could look through the formula, we are calculating the distance between the each data point and the mean value. So as soon as the data points are more far from the mean value, you can argue that this expression is greater. All right? And uh, then we, we normalize it over n, because let's think about one example, like you have a lot of points over here, like crazy, and then you have a little small point over here. So if you don't divide it by n, then at the end, your dispersion is going to be huge because of just one data point. So if we divide it by n, we can realize that as soon as we have more and more data points, 
the, uh, the fact of having one that is like completely atypical, it won't change that much the variance, but still it would be greater than just having these points. All right. Now, if we go through the definition of the standard deviation, it's exactly the same thing. Basically, it's different notation. This, the standard deviation is this, which is equal to the square root of the variance. Now, what does it mean? From the meaning perspective, it's the same thing. Uh, basically, you are getting the dispersion of the data, but one thing that you need in mathematics is that the, me the mean value uses the same uh, units as the standard deviation. That's the one of the reasons that we have like variance and also standard deviation. It's just from the mathematical point of view. But at the end, both of them have the same meaning. Now, if you go through the definition of the bias, let's refer again to an example. You have a point over here, sorry, two dimensions again, A, H, and weight. All right. And then you have uh, a set of points like this. And then uh, you have a machine learning algorithm that calculates a function that approximates these data sets. So you can define a rule based on the age and weight of a specific, a specific outcome. For example, you can say that if the age is greater than 40 and uh, the weight is lower than, I don't know, 50. You can conclude that the person is uh, underweight. All right, this operation rule in machine learning. Now, if our machine learning algorithm does something like, for instance, let's say that it gives us something like this. Given these data points, we get a result over here. You can argue that the bias is huge. Why is the bias huge? Because if the machine algorithm was correct, sorry, if the machine learning algorithm was correct, then we would have gotten something like this, right? Like given these two different ones, uh, we should be able to get the correct answer and not the wrong one which is in this particular case, like there is no data points over there with a prediction rule, but with this prediction rule, we're getting a correct answer. Now, uh, there are two, both of them are like complementary, all right? And if you refer to the bias formula, I wanna try to show you something. Oops, sorry. Uh, I cannot move my window, great. Let me show you wait, in here, uh, bias and variance. If you search on the web, it takes a little bit of time, sorry. The tool I'm using is not so great as it seemed like at the beginning. Yeah, all right. If you go to images, then you can see this. I hope that is clear. Now, Let's uh, let's focus on the on each one of them, and then we go to the uh, sorry. So we go through each one of the fourth cases. So in the top left corner we have low variance and low bias, which means that our machine learning algorithm it's pretty accurate, and the data points uh, which are we are gathering with that machine learning are they have not so much dispersion. Now in the top right you can see that the bias is still low. I mean, our machine learning algorithm englows all the points, but there is a high variance in these data points. Bottom left, there is a high bias, which means that our machine learning algorithm is not getting the concrete and the optimized boundary for all data points. And on the bottom right, you have First, that your machine learning algorithm has a huge bias, which means that it's not approximating correctly the data. And then you also have a high variance of the data sets, sorry, on the data points. Uh, I think that it's kind of confusing if I use the term of data points and data sets, 
So just think about like the data points is in the Euclidean space as the examples that I was showing to you. And the data set is the whole thing of the whole set of rows. All right. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.